Now, there's a saying that all that glitters is not gold. Now, is this the fate of this certain lady or not? Now, there's a story about a lady who worked with her father in one of her dad's companies. And on this fateful day, a young gentleman with a very, according to her, a very well ironed, clean suit walked in looking very good. Young, flashy gentleman walks into the father's office and immediately she was carried away by his uh, elegance and um, poise, you know. And he noticed that she liked him on a first instance. So, as a very sharp guy, he took advantage of that attraction and approached her, asked her out, and immediately she, she said she immediately agreed to dating on first meeting. So she didn't merely just give in to dating him, but she gave him all the gray lights to, to press and she eventually agreed to dating. Now, she ignored all the red flags that were right in front of her eyes, which were the fact that he didn't have a house, he didn't have a, his own personal house, he lived, he lived with his parents, and the fact that he kept asking her for money very, very often. Very, very often. Now, she was not against the fact that he was asking for money. Obviously, he just started working in her father's company. So he felt, she felt he was just trying to have a very wonderful start and he had a bright future that we're going to build together to become an empire just like her dad's. Now, her parents were 100% against the relationship, especially when she said that they were going to get married. The parents felt he was a gold digger, an opportunist. I want to just take advantage of just an ignorant, uh, naive, rich girl. But she insisted, and the parents had to give in, and when he helped. Now they are married, but obviously not happily, because after the wedding, the dad gifted this young couple one of his companies for them to start up with, not to just remain as a staff and employee, but to have their own, companies, their own company as a couple. Out of respect, even though it's a dad's gift to them, she made the husband, she allowed the husband to be the MD of the company. And that was where the problem started. Because he never came to work anymore because he was not the boss. And all the proceeds from the company, he squandered on outings, late nights, clubbings, and one joint or the other with his friends, and wrecked the company until the company had to fold up. Now, he didn't stop there. All the cars they had in their position, probably from gifts or they had to buy along the way, he sold everything, so they were left with nothing. The only car left was the car uh, uh, she had, which was a gift from her dad to her. And the dad intentionally gave her that car without the papers because of how reckless he knew the husband was. That if, he, if he did give her the papers, he would have also sold that car. So there were no papers, so he couldn't sell that car. That was the only car. They, they, they had left. As a matter of fact, that's what Monica she currently has. Now, she's gone back to her parents to complain. And the dads are saying, the, the dad and mom, they're saying, leave this marriage. That thankfully for you, you don't even have a child yet in all three years of marriage. You don't have a child. So it's a very good reason for you to just walk out with your head held high. Now, what she's thinking, if she should go the route of her parents' counsel or her pastor's counsel, which says, stick to the man, remain patient with him. He's made his mistake and he needs a second chance. He's learned from this mistake. Any opportunity he has with wealth or money, again, he would learn from what happened to him and retrace his steps that he should give the man a second chance. Now, what do you think? Do you think you should give this guy a second chance and he will change? Or she should stick to her parents' advice who stop, who tried to stop her from the marriage in the first place and now are asking her to get a divorce? What do you think? Please leave your advice or counsel in the comment section and she'll be going through it. I'll be right back. Welcome back. This is Share with Noble, and my name is Valentine Algo. And I'm here on set with two very sound minds and uh, uh, elders when it comes to uh, uh, issues like I just uh, shared with you. Uh, I have with me Gloria Mona, you're welcome, sir. And Augusto Milo, you're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, let me start with you, um, Augusto Milo. Yeah. 
You heard the story. What do you think about this lady's plight right now? And how do you think she, she can come out of this? The best which could come out of this? <laughs> First of all, you know, you, with your introduction, it, it appeared the young man was a, a gold digger. Okay. Yes. But as far as I'm concerned, two of them were gold diggers. Oh, whereas, wow. yes, whereas the, the boy was a financial gold digger, okay. this girl or this lady, she dwelt more on uh, what appeared to her, on appearance, you know, and she took advantage of it. While the other young man was taking advantage of it. So they took advantage of each other. Yes, exactly. Now, having said that, you know, yes, the, the way they are now, whether she should uh, leave the marriage or something, you know, uh, the best thing for her to do is not actually to leave the marriage. That is on the condition that is still in good relationship with her parents. And also in, uh, in a position to fend for herself, assuming the parents don't give her any support again as uh, rich people. Why I'm saying it's not right for her to leave the marriage is because, uh, yes, that thing that affected you to the man may also help you to build the man. You must understand that uh, nothing is uh, actually by accident. There's something that may have actually prompted her to behave the way she behaved towards the boy. And therefore, she will be the only one that can solve the problem of that young man. In which case, she should now approach the man, the young man. This is where we are. We started like this, and my parents gave us this for us to begin to live. This is where we are now, we don't have anything again. What do you expect me to do? The boy may be on, her, on his knees to say, ah, please forgive me. What do we do again now? Do we now do this or do that? If the potentials you saw in the boy is still there, apart from money, because the, boy, the fact that the boy was able to dress in a way that, uh, you know, suggested that uh, she was a responsible person. The, the fact that she dressed like that, he dressed like that, means that uh, she can see uh, be in a position to get a job because for her for him to have applied to your father's company meant that uh, maybe she has a qualification at least yes so, yeah. something i left out sorry to interrupt yeah. you was the fact that she also mentioned that even in this current state mm. the only move that the husband is making currently mm. besides just sitting at home and while they were doing nothing mm. is to keep pressing her to go to her dad and request for money yeah Go to your father, request for money. Go to your father, request for help. Go to your father. So that's those are the only uh, uh, moves. Yes. The only moves that yes. that's the, the young man is, Yes, yeah. yes, and that is the reason why she should not tell him that uh, you know it is not proper for me to be requesting money from my parents because uh, it will discourage them, and that is the truth. The parents, your parents now will be discouraged that uh, you know you are married and yet you are feeding on us. It is not fair. So because they are, they, are, they are discouraged now, I don't want them to continue to look at us like that. Is there nothing you can do? You know, two of them should sit down together and reason out. If you have a qualification, maybe like uh, you have a first degree in accounting, you have a first degree in engineering or something. Yes, we're having our own company, which you are grounded. Can't you look for another employment? I can help you. If you get another employment, now where they are paying you salary? Yes, me now, I can get whatever I can, even if I don't even tell my parents that I'm taking the money from them because I want to give you. But seeing you that you are working will help them to believe that uh, we are doing something. They will help us. Okay, so Mr. Gray, what, what do you have to say about this? Yes, interestingly, the, the moral of this story is that Nigerian parents are not very happy with the moral of this story. It's unlikely in your intro. All that it has some good yes. But in sharing the burden you know, of uh, of uh, being comfortable, uh, attraction based on economic stimuli usually you know is more open to condemnation than attraction based on emotion. So in sharing you know the burden you know in, in, in distributing the, 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 the burden of uh, moral responsibility it is a main factor that, that, that there's a the greater yeah. yes because um Attraction to the, to the economic to economic stability and implications are more sales for the maintenance of the social stability or stability of society right. than the emotion. What made the woman subject to that stimulus is simply engraved in human condition. Everybody is attracted physically, but the economic is more damnable because the economic connects with the, that that problem we have in society. That is a bit kleptomanic. Okay. Yes. What the uh, PG, PG communicators call it long truth. Long truth, yeah. The long truth problem, you know, where it has to do with cash and a craving for material rewards 
is more condemnable than the law of truth problem, you know, connected with the you know, uh, law of romance. A craving for romance is more innocuous, it's more uh, harmless than the craving for cash. What, 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 is, what is the plague in present day society? Is it crazy for cash? It has traversed the political arena. That's why people are screaming and the National Assembly members, all of you are rogues. When people are suffering and looking for money. The problem has traversed the church. The church today is a sibling, sibling as an S E E T H I N G. It's, a, it's, it's an arena for, for remorseless past struggle. And that past struggle is, is, is engraved in, you know, the only state of mind. Greed. The man, he must have walked in, you know, looking like a, a Johnny Walker or maybe Elton yeah, John. John. <laughs> but that's an issue. He, he, he came in, it is, it is condemnable to take advantage of a woman because that woman is of economy, strong economic background. Yeah, the, 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 the ideas, you know, the, from the middle of uh, a spouse, they are good, that is, but it's an like idealistic situation. Sit the man down, you know, just like the previous uh, case, sit him down. Talk to him. Use your God-given endowment. God use your natural endowment. Look for you know a prospect and utilize it. We are talking. We are thinking in the idea. We are using the idea to situation. And then look at the other side to it. You say what compounds the problem is that the man in this sorry state of affairs is still angering for a material solution. Go back to your, your, your father. That is for a psych someone that is strong in psychoanalysis. That is a, a sufficient that is sufficient reason to come to the conclusion that he's an irredeemable offender. The man is an irredeemable offender because nobody expected him to think he should have thought of so wait to wait to only I should have made a mistake. Oh, let me go back. Let me use my certificate. Let me look for a job. Say, go back to your father. To that is money. What is killing the world today? Like what Hare Krishna people say, materialism is killing the world. It has damaged the church, it has damaged the political arena, and the commercial. Oh, that, that, that. Is so, uh, um, uh, Now, is there anything wrong in a woman helping the husband to establish be settled? Because a lot of ladies would say this is the reason why they want to marry someone bigger than them or at the same status level with them. They don't want to help anyone become someone. Because at the end of the day, that person wrecks them or that person abandons them and starts going after younger people or uh, just quanders the world because he didn't work for it. Is that, is that justifiable for ladies to only stick or guys now to only stick to people in their, in their circle, especially ladies, to stick to the guys, to guys that are in their circle? Not to wanting to help people who, at the end of the day, will be perceived as either truthfully gold diggers or circumstance uh, 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 gold diggers. Then you're wrong with that. There's something wrong there. You see, we will walk or live in a world governed by principles. And one of the principles that govern the earth here, we are now, is the principle of thinking or thought. Whatever a man thinks, you know, in his mind, so he is. So he is. Yes. Now, and, uh, I read a book by Napoleon Hill where he said, Thoughts are things. Now, if you want to get married as a young man, the first thing that comes to your mind sometimes, I don't, uh, I'm not talking of people who now just want to be married and they don't even have anything in mind, anybody that comes, is you are making up your mind that I want to marry a handsome, uh, uh, well dressed person, neat person yellow, tall, that, 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 that is your description. Yeah. So if that stays in your mind for too long or very long time, you get such a person. But unfortunately, you did not add a handsome, rich man. So nature will give to you a handsome man, good looking, very neat, tall, whatever. You get it. So at the end of the day now, you get such a person. So it's all for you now to begin to now regret that uh, this person now is pestering you about your father's wealth. It's your fault. It's your fault that you didn't include the fact that uh, you are not looking for a man that will be pestering you on your father's word. You just look for. So what you expected is what you actually got. And because of that, yes, because of that now, you should leverage on the fact that uh, whatever you got attracted to yourself was as a result of your own thinking pattern. And therefore, you have to manage it now because you got all the other aspects of it. 
in Hanson, tall, uh, neat, um, eloquent in speech, yeah. and all that. You got all that, except the fact that uh, you know, because if you knew, you would have said a man also that they would not be asking me for money when I'm in fact yes. So if you now look at the condition that led you to this man, you know, if you if you now recognize that uh, they were actually as a result of what you thought by yourself, you have to manage the man like that and see how you can build him up. It's not bad that uh, a woman is building up a man. It's not bad, it's not compulsory. So but, but why do you think most parents insist on their daughters mm -hmm. getting married to well to do men? Yes, why they insist is because of this principle I just told you now. Because, yes, you expect your daughter to be married to a well-to-do man. Yeah. But you are not in the mind of your daughter. Except you take time to educate your daughter to that effect that as a man thinketh in his heart or her heart, so he is. If you want to marry... Let me tell you something. A very long time ago, some people, some students were in the class and they were asking them, what do you want to become in future? This one said, I want to become a doctor. This one I want to become a doctor. This one I want to become a rich man. I want to become a, a, an engineer. One of them stood up and said, I want to be a rich man. And in fullness of time, he became a rich man and he's not a rich people in the end today. So if you are saying your daughter should marry somebody who must be rich, is that what your daughter is saying? Your daughter may be missing it. So your daughter must be properly taught you know, maybe in church or whatever, you know, giving the kind of books. How to, yes, how to now appropriate to herself okay. the kind of person they want. So that at the time of uh, this uh, relationship uh, materialization, there will be an attraction of uh, the like mindedness uh, of uh, people. You know, but if you allow your daughter to take the decision on her, uh, herself alone, women are given to looking at things at the peripheral level. You know, they look at uh, the appearance of men and say, this is what I want. Okay. Yeah, they don't go deep. One final word from you, but while going through I just want to find out, if you were in her father's shoes, what would be your approach towards what your daughter would be going through right now? First of all, I would be a colleague by the fact that uh, there's no uh, 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 material responsibility involved, no issues yet. Okay? And then no, they, don't have, they don't have any children. Yes. So I'll quietly ask her to opt out of the marriage. Out of the relationship. The relationship. Yes, because uh, the signs are there that um, you know he's, he's dealing more with a hedonist than a realist. You know, the, the man he has shown all the signs of a pleasure driven intelligence, not someone that looks far into the future. And not one that is settled to genuine options for conducting the relationship. So, one final, do you agree with his own perspective on yes. being the dad of the girl? Yes, yes, that, yes. That is after my daughter has uh, explored, uh, you know, like every other option. Okay, like, that will not be your first option. You know, it will not be your first option. Okay. That is after you have now talked to the, your husband as it were now that, uh, you know, see, two of us have to sit down to see how we can manage yeah, ourselves work. without our parents. Because after all, okay. under normal condition, our parents will die before us. So, what happens if they are not longer with us? So, if you, if you something, when you now get yourself satisfied, that you have done all these things, and yet the man does not uh, seem to agree with you that you can do whatever you think you can do with the marriage. That would be the last option. Why, why, why has there been this recurring rate of uh, uh, excuses for divorce? Because at the end of the day, we just have to settle for workout. Yeah. We have to settle for workout. Mm -hmm. that, that's like increasing the divorce rates in the society. Yeah. That people just don't think anymore or don't just look properly or are not patient enough to make the right decisions who they settle because. You guys have been married for, 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 for decades and you are still happily married. All right. So what, what, what's happened to this generation that, that, it's, that it's ending up in, on a pleasant note? Quickly, please. Uh, it's a generational problem. And uh, the divorce option, you know, is uh, something in you know, uh, nature, or even science, we call the self-regulatory principle. You know, people that really want to uh, adduce solutions to social, uh, social problems, they kind of think instinctively. To that self regulatory principle, like cybernetics, let society govern itself okay. according to experience. Okay. You know? okay. So it is, it is the reality of experience that offers that ruthless solution. It's not a good thing. Nobody wants divorce for the sake of divorce. Yeah. But where, you know, something is uh, unmanageable, uh, it's like a uh, late professor, Emmanuel Ariadne, he described uh, you know, ethnic communities and cross rivers, he said, atomistic societies. Perpetually at war with themselves. So he found that those people had no solution to their own problem because they believe in, you know, 
wrangling and wrangling and wrangling. Society appears to follow that course. So you look for, you know, what my husband used to call the, the line of this resistance. Yeah. 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 You know, as a Christian, you know, the Bible talks about uh, guarding your heart with all diligence for yes. act of faith and the issues of life. So right from the beginning, there are some things that you accept in your heart to happen. You know, there are some people who are saying, and sometimes, if my wife does like this, me, yeah, I will take it. Okay, that's what you are taught. For example, I say, if my wife makes me say to say, I hear that it's during that meeting they call it creepy, you know, creepy in uh, some language it means what is the essence of marriage. If, okay. if, if my wife belongs to that meeting, mm -hmm. yes, so now, now, nah, so if that is what is in your heart, okay. and you keep it and you are meditating on that all the time. One day you will hear that, yeah, wife, yeah you, you hear that your wife is in that uh, application, <laughs> and in that case. Without even spreading any talk, you ask your wife to leave you because you have about some things that are not uh, actually supposed to be in your heart. That is why you should guard yourself with all diligence. Because if you don't, uh, anything you, you think, you say, behold, all the things that I thought, you know, yeah. have now come upon me. Yeah. They are not happening. There are some persons who, uh, because of the way they were brought up or something, they just uh, kind of uh, bring some thoughts in themselves. Hoping that this will not happen, but if it happens, I know what I'm going to do. My wife, I can't take it, and it will happen, and you can't take it. <laughs> so that is why some of all these things are happening in society today because uh, our young boys and young girls have brought to themselves opportunities to accommodate things that are not in tandem with their lives by attraction. Thank you very much. Uh, that's as much as we can take for this episode on Share with Noble. Uh, please do like, share, and most importantly. Drop your comments. We want to know what you think. She wants to know what you think and how best she can come out of the situation. And uh, let me know what you think about uh, of my panelists here on their various points and their stands. Uh, if you support or you're against, and of course, share your experience or the experience with someone else uh, and that you will be able to that information. Alright, please do like, share, drop your comments, and don't forget to subscribe.